This is the Oppo Reno 6 Pro, but before we begin with our review, we need to highlight a few things. Number one, the Malaysian version of the Oppo Reno 6 Pro comes with Snapdragon 870. And also, we don't have the 108 megapixel camera. I think other regions are using that camera, but the one that we have here is only 50 megapixels. And those are the only two major differences that I can find out. Not too sure about any other differences, but yeah, this is specifically for the Snapdragon version of the Oppo Reno 6 Pro. So let's begin. So I quickly want to highlight about the unboxing experience first because the Oppo Reno 6 Pro does not come with an earphone in the box. And I highlighted that because the Oppo Reno 6Z does come with a headphone inside the box. And uh, we don't even get any earphones, even USB Type-C ones in the box for the Oppo Reno 6 Pro. So there are some inconsistency in terms of what's included in a box within the Oppo Reno 6 series of smartphones. Now, as for the design of the Oppo Reno 6 Pro, I would say it's very sexy. It's nice to hold. The curvatures of this phone is, it's just very nice. The size in particular makes it just nice to hold it in one hand. It's not too wide. And I also want to highlight that the back of this phone here does come with the Oppo Reno Glow finish as well. It's a matte finish just like the Oppo Reno 6Z. And when I brush my finger on it, you can hear the noise as well. And I just want to highlight that the color on this phone is just very pretty to look at. It's calming, nice to touch as well, which I really like. But when we look at the camera cutout, does this remind you of some other phone? Because I have it in the house, which is the Galaxy Note 20. The camera cutout between these two phones looks very similar. And the placement of all the components around this camera cutout is identical. But how does these four cameras actually perform? We'll start off with the main camera. It's actually pretty good. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the HDR coming out of these pictures are, although they look kind of unrealistic, it is well done. All of the parts of these pictures has proper brightness, which is what HDR is supposed to be. The Oppo Reno 6 Pro also has a color temperature sensor, which manages to nail the white balance for most of the time. But this shot in particular just looks extremely blue instead of green. And same goes to the ultra wide angle camera too. The pictures coming out of this camera is good. Now as for the telephoto camera, it's a bit weird because Oppo didn't state what's the focal length. They just write it as 5 times hybrid zoom. So I did a really quick and simple test. I manually zoom to see when the camera switches to the telephoto camera. This is obviously seen if you're gonna zoom it really really slowly. And I found out that the telephoto camera is actually a 2 times optical zoom. That aside, the pictures do look good at 2 times optical zoom. But once we go up to 5 times hybrid zoom, uh, the picture starts to look a bit soft and also a bit noisy, pixely. So yeah, don't use it at 5 times zoom if you want sharp pictures. And now finally and definitely the least is the 2 megapixel macro camera with a fixed focus lens. Honestly, I would just tell you to forget about this camera entirely. It sucks and I would suggest you to just use the main camera, take a picture and then crop it in for that quote unquote macro effect. It will look a lot better in terms of colors, brightness and sharpness. As for the software side of things though, the Oppo Reno 6 Pro is definitely more premium in terms of Oppo's lineup of smartphones. But the ColorOS 11 here still comes with a lot of preloaded apps, a lot of bloatware. Like for example, the app market, which also comes with the hot games, hot apps, and a lot more other pre-installed apps that you have to remove it manually. I just find it to be a bit annoying because I don't think most of us is going to use all of those pre-installed apps. So yeah, but other than all of the pre-installed apps and bloatware, all of those stuff, ColorOS 11 is actually pretty good. The menus are laid out in a proper manner. And yeah, I like ColorOS 11. Just not those pre-installed apps. As for the battery side of things, the Oppo Reno 6 Pro does come with a 4,500mAh battery, which lasts for throughout the day without any issues at all. So yeah, you can do whatever you want with the phone and it still 
will most probably have some juice left at the end of the day. And the charger, in case you ever need any quick top-ups, this phone comes with a 65 watts Super VOOC 2.0 proprietary charger. It manages to charge the Oppo Reno 6 Pro from 15 to 100% in only about half an hour's time. This is achieved because the Oppo Reno 6 Pro does come with a dual cell battery design, which can literally just speed up your battery's charging speed. And I want to highlight the word proprietary once again because although this Super VOOC 2.0 charger is at 65 watts, you cannot charge any USB PD laptops with it because it does not support USB PD. It's a proprietary charger. Yeah. If you want to learn more about chargers, do leave them down in the comment section below because I'm still considering into making a video about fast charging and all of those stuff. So let us know. And in terms of performance, like what we mentioned at the beginning of this video, this phone comes with a Snapdragon 870 chipset and overall, I would say the performance is good. And also the heat management of the Oppo Reno 6 Pro is also good. So far, I never realized any overheating issue or excessive heating issue to the point where it burns my hands. So yeah, I played Genshin Impact at the highest possible graphical settings on the Oppo Reno 6 Pro. No problems. And if you want to check out the full gaming performance of the Oppo Reno 6 Pro, watch our video at the top right corner there. And then we need to talk about the display as well because the Oppo Reno 6 Pro comes with a 6.5 inch curved AMOLED screen and it has a resolution of 2400 by 1080 with a refresh rate of up to 90 hertz and this phone can be really bright too. One thing I need to clarify is that the banding that you're seeing on this video is only appearing in video. If I look at it with my eyes right now, there's no bending, but on the camera, it most probably is showing the bending situation now. And this phone also comes with a pre-installed screen protector, so that's good. And uh, one thing that I need to highlight is that Oppo, please do not put your under display fingerprint scanner so far down the phone. It's very difficult to reach and it's also not ergonomic at all. And finally, for the price, the Oppo Reno 6 Pro with the Snapdragon 870 chipset in Malaysia, it is priced at 2,999 ringgit, which I think is definitely a premium price to pay for a smartphone, but there are a few things that you need to take note of. For example, this phone does not have HDMI output over Type-C. If you need that, then don't get this phone. And other than that though, yeah, this phone is pretty good. The price tag is indeed justifiable. So yeah, that's it. That's all we have to share with you about the Oppo Reno 6 Pro. And we'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Goodbye.